what parts of the marriage or the whole process is Islamic and one part, what parts are not? I'll tell you straight what is. For you to go and to propose to her or to go to see her is a sunnah. And that's, that's in the hadith. To, and he has said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to one Sahabi, he said, Have you seen her? He said, No. He said, Go and see her. He said, It's okay. He said, Go and see her because she's this, from this tribe. And the women of that tribe sometimes have an eye out of placement. You know, when some, you know, sometimes, you know, you've got both eyes in the same place at the same time. When you're looking left or right, they move. Sometimes you have one eye in one place and the other eye moves. But this eye doesn't move in coincidence. Yeah? So he says, He said that. It's in hadith. Go and see her. Go and see her. So to go and see her is a sunnah. To go and to know, obviously, as I've said, a, a deen, to go and know the deen, to go and know the character and so on. Of course, with the mahram there is part of the deen. Then for the family to make the decision that, yes, we're going to allow my daughter, you're going to allow your son to get together. Yep, that is part of the deen. But after that, the real deen is a nikah and a walima. There's no such concept of engagement. You know, this whole thing about engagement and all that, you know, that we've actually now you know, said there's going to be a wedding date. We've, we've made the promise to each other. There's no such thing. As soon as possible, you should have your nikah date fixed. Why? Because shaitan can come in between. The longer you keep that date ahead, the more you're going to get people talking, gossiping, and something's going to come up. And someone's going to say something rude somewhere and it's all going to be off. Poor guy, poor girl. So, you keep the nikah date as close as you can. And the second thing you do is the sunnah. You know what the sunnah is? The sunnah is an imam or someone who's qualified to do the nikah does the nikah. So he makes her say that she's going to accept, he will accept. The dowry is fixed as part of the sunnah. And what is the dowry? The dowry is something which he gives to her as a gift. It doesn't have to be an asset. It can be. It can be gold, it can be silver, it can be money, it could be something else. But there's no maximum to it, but there is a kind of a minimum to it. And there's different opinion in the different fiqh, I'm not going to go into that. But the dowry is a sunnah, that's what I'll say to you. Now, he's given a dowry and there has to be two Muslim male witnesses that will witness this nikah. If that is done and they've accepted each other, the nikah has been performed. The sunnah is to give dates after this to eat dates. No food. Again, if you give him food, it's not against the sunnah. I'm going to explain this in a bit. Right? After three days of consummating the marriage, so that day the nikah was done, wait for three nights. After three nights, you will then have a walima. And the walima, you will try and publicize it as best as you can. You are even allowed to use drums to publicize. This is even in the hadith. And you will try and at least have a, a goat. Rasulullah said, Aulimu walau bisha. He said, even with one single goat, if you can make the walima, then make the walima. So you should feed people on that day. You should publicize, you should call as you know as many of the public people as you can, your friends, family, whoever, to come and have that meal. So they know that these two have got married. That much is the sunnah. That's it. Is there anything else to remember? I'll tell you. But anything else besides this? So now let's go through the norms, okay? The norms is that you basically get into towards a marriage, so they're going to have now, uh, you're going to have, oh my god, you know, there's so many customs here, right? You're going to have one custom where it's called the Mendi. It's a big custom, the Mendi. I mean, they're all going to dress to say, oh, come on, for Allah's sake, right? Why are they making three different um, pieces of clothing? One for the Mendi, one for the wedding, and one for the Walima. And they're only going to wear them once in their lifetime. This is the worst thing. If they're not going to donate these afterwards, right? And they come in front of me, I'd want to slap them. Because they're wasting time, they're wasting money. They're wasting money when there's poor people across the world who can do with those clothes. So if you're going to do that, please donate those clothes after you wear Because you know, I know you know you're not going to wear those clothes again because it's a shame on you to wear those clothes again. That's why they don't wear it. If I wear these clothes in another wedding, and people are going to say, Oh my God, did you see he wore those clothes again? You know me, you will see me in a wedding, you know what I do? I wear more or less the same clothes at almost every wedding. I have a white jubber on, and I have about three different tops on, I love that, and I have the same shoes. Look at my shoes, they'll be always the same, same shoes. I don't care. I don't care. 
You're going to say, say to me, I'm wearing the same clothes, so what? Well, I'm going to go into Israf, I'm going to try and change my clothes every time I go to a wedding, wear something different and never wear it again in another wedding. Right? Okay, then, then okay, on the Mendi, they have customs. Now, again, please differentiate between customs and Islam. These are fully customs. They don't have to be there, and if you're going to do that, then be wary of the fact that Islam never told you to do any of this. Be wary of that fact. <coughs> and the second thing is, sometimes they're free mixing in those. Sometimes there's an Islam practice. If there's an Islam practices, you are responsible for that as the people who have organized this. The actual wedding day comes. And the amount of stuff they have. I mean, I was in one wedding where I performed the nikah. And I sat at the table. We, they calculated at the table that within four hours, the guy has spent 50,000 pounds. What? Uh, you know, I just can't get my head around it. They calculated the, the hire of the hall, the kind of food that he had, the decoration of the chairs, the hiring of whatever he hired outside to carry them. Um, they, they, they calculated, you know, all the arrangements they did. And they knew because they were family members and they said, this is how much he spent for this wedding. 50,000 pounds. And I'll tell you, brother and sister, and I'm telling all your parents, you know, the simplest way to get married is what? To go and hire and you know, do it in your homes you know the simplest way to get married you know people can't find holes they say I can't find a hole and I'm basically you know we've been looking for holes right you know the simplest thing to do it in your house your back garden get a marquee back garden, people do this people have started doing this right back garden get a marquee right? and have your wedding over three days you can't fit everyone in your house one day fine don't fit them in your house one day fit them over three days have six meals Different people every meal. So it's a, it's a simple solution. I'm saying, I'm saying, and cook in your back garden or cook from outside from some family you can cook, bring it together. You'll save on a lot of costs. It's a brilliant idea. In the marquee, you have chairs there, tables there. You could probably fit about 30, 40, 50 people in the garden. You want to call how many? You want to call 300 people, right? Six meals, you've got your 300 people inside there. You call one, one group at lunch, gone. Is there embarrassment? There's no embarrassment in that. Just call them. Do it. Okay, you want to go next level. You, you don't want to put yourself through that. Okay, fine, brother. I understand. Yeah, go and do it in the masjid. Do it in the masjid. I had both my both my things. The nikah and the walima. I had both of the masjid. I think the time I got married in 2000. Alhamdulillah, I didn't pay from my side. That is for my walima that I raised. I didn't pay more than 1,000 pounds. Alhamdulillah. And I ask you, stay in masjid. Masjids have got holes inside. Holes next to them, hide them out. If you can't fit people in one go, fit them two times around. There's no shame in that. If people say to you, shame, tell them, I said, shame on them for spending 50k somewhere else. Spending 20k somewhere else. Shame on you, bruv. Tell them on their face. Shame on you when you could have spent 2,000 pounds. You spent 20,000 pounds. Just for what? The difference is, look, I'm on a chair right now, yeah? The difference is that chair is going to have a bit more cushion to it. One more centimeter. That chair, this chair is black. That one's going to be red. Ha ha. That, this hole has got this carpet like this, right? Just normal green carpet. That hole is just kind of red carpet. Big deal. Red carpet, I can buy it when I go to copyright. I can put it in my house, put it in my marquee in my back garden. You're so stuck about red carpet, bring in the mustard and roll it out. Right? What is it? The food. The food, yeah? You can cook yourself. You know it. Why spend on caterers? Some of them, honestly, without iman, without you know salah, cooking that food, and you're going to feed all those people. And then on the day, my God, I've been to so many weddings, right? You get there and everyone's the boss. <laughs> That's the worst thing, man. My God. You know when I do a nikah, I always have to ask. I say, who's in charge? You give me one name. Who's in charge? I say, you know, I'm in charge. Oh, he's in charge. No, 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 none of that business. They tell me one person who's in charge. Because the thing is, the person who's in charge, if you get one person who's in charge, okay, the rest of them are going to be grumbling. They're going to be mumbling. And what happens after that is what? You get to the, you get to the, uh, you get to the wedding hall. There's some people, look, please respect, don't, don't, respect Allah, please, res please respect Allah and please respect Allah's messenger. Don't start your wedding by doing something un-Islamic. You know, sometimes I go to somebody, I have to now say, are you going to have, you know, music there? 
Sometimes what they do just to respect me, they might switch it off as soon as I'm out, they put it back on. Fine, at least that's some form of respect. Some of them, you know, the do doof daf, doom boom boom boom, right, going on, right? Oh, you telling me that angels are going to come to the over there? Some of them, they're just about for the nikah, they stop. For the nikah, they'll stop and they'll carry on. Next thing is the free mixing. And there's people going to the wedding for what? They want to advertise themselves. They want to look for other brides. They want to look for brides for their, for their sons. My God, it becomes like a market. If you come to a market, come on, I didn't, have, I didn't want this. So they come and they're basically looking at each other and they're committing their lustful, you know, another, so, so on. But anyway, the poor guy and the poor girl, they have to put up with all this custom. You don't have to go through all of these brothers. Just if you want, please, do this one thing for me. You are the new generation. I'm talking to most of you here who are young, who haven't got married, yeah? Make a change. Make a change by telling them that I don't want this. If they don't want to respect you for it, yeah, you can put your foot down. You can put your foot down. If they're desperate to get you married, say, on my conditions. On my conditions. If they're desperate to get you married to so-and-so, say, on my conditions, tell them. And I'm telling you, they'll come around it. They'll come around it. 